What should we paint today? Uh, blank sheet of paper, lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt amber, paint grey and burnt sienna. <clears throat> I'll give them a bit of a spray with the water just to give them a start. Uh, <clears throat> Fabriana 130 pound weight and the two inch hake and probably, probably a rigger. Something with water, hills, distant hills, marshy, lonely. Uh, so I'll wet the paper all over. I've got it at about 30 degrees, ideal angle. So it runs down but doesn't run, run down too quickly. Sorry about the blue bottle that's flying around. We used a, an old acquaintanceship with a, a friend who had a framing, he was a, fr he was a framer. He was in South Croydon and he sold lots of my paintings over a number of years. But in about 2009 he, he, uh, did, he didn't want to renew the lease, the way things were. So he rented a property across the, ro the road from him in South Croydon. It's a Sackville Gallery and lucky for me, I hope, and lucky for him, he's moved to just around the corner in Wallington. So if any of you are looking for a framer in the Croydon, Wallington, Sutton area, Purley, he, he used to be the rep for Origin Frame Wholesalers and he did their framing course and set up on his own and uh, he's been a great framer ever since. And I hadn't seen him for five years. Four, four years probably, and uh, it's lovely to see him again. He's renting this property, no lease, so he doesn't have to worry about that. So it's good for me. Just a bit of raw sienna. So it's the Sackville Gallery, Stafford Road, Wallington. I'm going to put links all over because I hope he's going to come and look at some of the some of my YouTube demos over the years, and uh, relieve me of the burden of several of them. We frame them up and see what happens. So I'll also link to his uh, gallery on Facebook. Okay, so nice and wet, got the initial warm wash, wash in, so we're putting a bit of nice ultra. Bit of, bit of alizarin in that, just a touch. Okay. Clouds. Clouds would be the light, the light bit, a bit of marshy area. Um, a bit more of the alizarin and a bit of the uh, darker blue, and so a bit, bit of cloud. Never know how these are going to work out. Um, Maybe a bit of light version of that. Okay, quite like that. So I'm going to dry this with a hairdryer. So take your headphones off. Ready, go. Stops the cauliflowers in their tracks, and it speeds up the painting process. Of course, is the main reason. You know the cradle that the shoe on the cam on your cameras on my camera uh, fixes to on the tripod. Anybody have any ideas on you on eBay where I can get just the shoe that I can fix to a piece of wood, and then fix my camera to it? Because I'd like to have the camera above my head looking down, then I can paint at an even shallower angle, which is what I'm aiming for. So if anybody's got any ideas where I can buy one of those without buying the tripod and the, and the, uh, the handle as well, I don't want the handle, I just want the cradle that the shoe sits in. 
never thought to ask you, and I know you're all a, f a fount of knowledge. There's nothing to stop you when you get to this stage of going over that with a with a dry brush, but I, I quite like them as they are, so uh, we won't bother. Now I'm going to put in some distance, and I'm going to use some burnt sienna and a bit of a bit of alizarin, but it wants to be strong enough so that it registers. Touch of blue, just so these are my heels. Get up to the. Then we can change those colours, warmer. Put the green in. And then we get some blue and red, a bit of yellow. And just put the tree line in. Now this is all very simple. Try and keep your horizon straight, but you don't have you, you could bring in other other rocks, mountains. So it's just bring like that. When you paint over wet paint you need thick Thick stuff, almost tube. You can paint straight from the tube. You have Ron Ransom used to paint with the the hakes. Oh, we're just bringing some different colours in here. A bit of sienna, grasses. Now we put some. Some of that heavier colour on top here. Let's get that coming up there. This guy's edge, edge it. the end of that. Oh. I've got onto uh, the original hill there. Oh, just a bit of trees. And Okay, well, a little bit of card. We'll just lift out a little bit of this. Let's just show you some, some rocks. So that's a bit of, bit of easy texture. And just, oh, just a little bit of detail with the Scratch them with a card, and we can do the same here, just where the paint is a bit dark. And then we can develop that a bit with some nice sienna, raw sienna, burnt sienna, should I say, colour here. Now we'll do some, some rocks. Nice little colour in these rocks, so that when they you lift them out, you'll get different different effects. A bit of, bit of ochre, sorry, raw sienna. So I have me paint with acrylic as well. You, I don't use uh, raw sienna in, in oil. We don't do oil, but and acrylic. <coughs> right, <coughs> oh, excuse me, card. Right, let's uh, just scrape away from the light areas of of these rocks here, leaving some shadow. Be a bit creative with these, scraping out the, the high, the the, uh, the light side. Quite nice and warm. OK, 
Okay, we can put in some some darker blue shadow in there, I think. The texture. Okay, so that would be okay for that. And uh, we need something on the other side now. Something on that background as well. So we'll put in some nice autumn looking trees. Just an ultramarine and burnt sienna. I knew Dave Skingle was going to, or Sackville Gallery, the owner of, was going to turn up. I hadn't heard from him for five years. I never, well, I left him alone because he was just framing, he wasn't selling any pictures. But he's such a nice guy that. I hope I can drum up some business for him and for me. Okay, so we're just adding some bit of detail on this far shore here. And I can probably take out a couple of yachts. They're always good for a bit of detail. I know I do this endlessly, variations on a theme, but but I love doing them. I've got a bit of a hair stick on there. I'll show some I hate a split. When you split it's just touch it on the uh, palette with a bit of water and bring it back. Oh, we can see little spits of land there going uphill, aren't I? So we'll soon order that. I've got to put some reflection under that. Just going up, uphill, let's just. Right, that's, that's a bit better, and we can put some uh, bits of bushy stuff on here. Right, okay, let's just put in some, some grasses. I think when you look at this, if you have a go yourselves, it, does, it seems as if there's a lot going on, but there isn't. If you're a beginner, just do it. Don't be frightened, frightened of it. What you put above, put below. I will use a bit of a rigor on, on some of that. Now we've got some nice rich darks in here. Payne's grey, burnt sienna. The burnt sienna is my real favourite for mixing with the grey, the Payne's grey. Don't use paint screen on its own. It's just adding, adding flicks and flourishes, just little bits of detail. Over to this, of course, like I'm doing now, but but just just little bits of just filling in that, so putting reflection in, just broken sand and weed and just an impression. Use much green in this, so I'll yeah, and we've got loads and loads of detail on that, all for next to nothing. Uh, 
Don't put something on, on there, I think. It's a bit, a bit too obvious, but... Uh, okay, let's uh, bring in a, some Sandy Shaw. Ah, Sandy Shaw, she used to be a singer. Well, that's a matter of opinion. A bit of red in there, just to warm it up as we come down. A little bit of wiggle work in there. Right, okay. Um, well, I don't know, I've maybe not put a shadow. Uh, a reflection in there that's going alright. Okay, I'm quite pleased with that. Right. I'm going to dry that off and just lift out some detail in that distance. So the headphones off. Okay, uh, with the half inch brush whose situation escapes me. Uh, it's amazing, isn't it? Oh, where have you gone? Brush, brush, brush. Might have to use this one till I find it. Okay, well, I've lost it for the moment in the mess. So, damp it. And we will just lift out some, some boats to give them scale. I might put a little rainbow boat in. Just a little bit, just that adds just that little bit of interest in the distance. You can use uh, gouache to do this or a bit of acrylic, why is acrylic? Uh, let's uh, put some uh, masks in. In the old days, we used to lift those out with a razor blade. Okay, that'll do it. Let's go, rig up. Just a little bit of detail in the in there. Okay, now. Boats. Just a bit blue. That's all right. Uh, let's have it here. Uh, 
down there I'm going to put a little, little man Don't think it's too, too, too big on these. Let's just put them in. <coughs> okay, so birds. One there, because there's a slight blob. I'll give you a signature. The demo I did yesterday, the French dairy farm. I sold that. It was done as a commission. I'm pleased about that. Right, I'll put that in the frame. A bit of, bit of tape. There it is. If you ever do that, you, you can't see for looking. You look everywhere except under the nose, and there it is. Right, there we are. So I've got away from the, the blue background by putting lights on the distant hills. So, as Edward Weston would say, bags of damble. Wind you up literally. Okay, YouTube asked me if they can improve on that. Right, so there we are. Uh, boat on a boat on a lake, something. I, I'll think of the title. I think maybe the boat is just a little bit too thick, but there mind. Let's go round it. So there we are. So that's what I did first. That hill there on the left. Nice warm autumny colours. It's, like it's been after a long hot summer. So there's my foreground. Quite quite like that. And there's my man and the boat. My man and his boat. And the distance. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.